Today we're talking about Brexit, because after two years of watching the ship slowly heading towards the iceberg, it looks like impact might be imminent. Hey, Britain's good at a lot of things, leaving just isn't one of them. Simply ask America, India, or any other country that celebrates an independence day. So why are we talking about Brexit today? Well, last time we covered it, Theresa May had just overcome a second vote of no confidence. So I have a little updating to do. I'm a little bummed I can't lean on that Theresa dismay pun anymore, but hopefully I came up with something equally good. Since that time, Britain got a new Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, seen here really nailing that hard to achieve Gary Busey aesthetic. Unlike his predecessor Theresa May, Johnson's playing a little bit more fast and loose with the idea of a no deal Brexit. Don't worry, I'll get to that in a sec. Today I'm going to try to answer two questions. First, this broad question of what a no deal Brexit would even look like, and more specifically, why it's so much harder to predict than people are making it seem like. Most of the news has settled on, well, the economic impacts of a no deal Brexit are somewhere between the Great Depression and the literal apocalypse. In reality, most of the threats I'll lay out are incredibly bureaucratic and could end up having minimal impact if people aren't jerks to each other. The second question I'll try to answer is, what's up with Boris Johnson's ultimatum to the EU? First though, let's talk a no deal Brexit. But what are we talking about when we talk about a no-deal Brexit? Well, in its simplest terms, it's that there is no agreed destination when the UK departs the EU. No uh, transition period, no agreed terms for that divorce after the UK has been an integral part of the EU for decades. There are two main bureaucratic threats, free trade versus tariffs and a mismatch in import regulations. So first, tariffs. Now this is going to be the first of many times in this section you'll hear me say we just don't know. What happens to tariffs? The Economist for Free Trade, a pro-Brexit group, assumes that Britain unilaterally cuts all of them to zero, boosting trade and thus economic growth. Most economists think that is too optimistic. Now I know economists were born pessimists, but in this case that's probably accurate. The European Union has different tariff rules for EU and non-EU members, and in Brexiting, well, Britain is burning that EU membership card that got them all those sweet, sweet tax-free bennies. Now because they Brexited, Britain's free to do whatever they want with their tariff policy, but the EU, they're a little more set in their ways. Oh sorry Boris, but your membership card keeps getting declined. You're going to have to pay the same fees as America and China do. This is where you get reports like... Now, if the UK leaves without a deal, uh, the British government says there will be no tariffs on 87% of imports coming into the UK. That's up from the current 82%. But when it comes to goods coming from the European Union, which is the UK's biggest trading partner, there would be no tariffs on 82% of imports. That means that 18% of those imports currently don't have tariffs under the European Single Market Rules, but will have them under this plan. The reason that tariffs would kick in if there isn't a deal is because, hey, you're taxing our imports now, let me just return the favour really quickly. And now things are getting more expensive, people are buying less, and maybe recession. The impact is incredibly hard to predict though because, in such a scenario, the UK and EU would be trading under World Trade Organization rules until they got a deal, which include tariffs ranging from 4% to around 40%. In this case, the difference between 4 and 40% is the difference between too mundane to even be called a trade war and catastrophic. So there's definitely some wiggle room if the EU isn't feeling like a scorned lover over this whole Brexit rejection. The second unknown is regulations. And this is where you get people stocking up on medicine, food, and other things. This could apply to everything from airports to food. The government says that the UK would continue to follow EU regulations in many areas. But firms have to deal with new regulatory regimes. No certification is needed in farming, leading to warnings that trade in organic food might effectively be suspended. Now you might be asking yourselves, 
Well, if the UK is continuing to follow EU regulations, what's the problem? Well, again, the problem is with the question of whether the EU wants to give the UK the middle finger or not. An EU spokesperson recently said, the European Union does not plan to mirror the UK's initiatives to ease import regulation in the event of a no-deal Brexit. All member states have to take adequate measures to ensure that the EU's Union Customs Code is being followed in case of a no-deal Brexit. Basically, we're leaving the EU, so the way we export goods is changing. UK businesses who have only traded inside the EU will need to start using the same procedures used for trading outside the EU. Basically, now they're a foreign exporter again, and so they have to abide by the same regulations that everybody else has to. Because again, they're a fully foreign country, which was kind of the goal, so congratulations. Interestingly enough, because the biggest impact of this whole thing is Britain becoming a foreign country, the main way of predicting a no-deal Brexit's impact on people is through using estimates of non-tariff barriers between the EU and America, as a sort of guide to see what Britain could face. So America's trade relationship with Europe might actually be worst case scenario. Not too shabby. Although they're next door neighbors and a lot more trade goes between the two, so it would have a bigger impact. I wouldn't go knocking on the door looking for some sugar anytime soon. This would probably be the equivalent to the United States pulling out of NAFTA without another deal in place. Something that definitely shouldn't happen. So now that we know the main impacts of a no deal Brexit, Boris, what you doing? At this point, Boris is like a substitute teacher that got called in halfway through the semester because the old teacher just got burned out. The curriculum's already in place. You can either get the legislature to stop throwing paper airplanes and pass the agreement, or you can shut down, throw on a DVD, and wait for the no deal Brexit deadline. The problem is, Theresa May negotiated a deal that would have given the UK about as much independence as a teenager living in his parents' basement who wears Hot Topic and listens to music very loudly. Under the deal, the UK would still have to abide by all EU regulations, except now they wouldn't have input in what those regulations are. In return, no tariffs would be put into place, and the regulations well, because it's all the same regulations, they wouldn't be an issue. Boris wants to renegotiate that deal because, well, you heard what I just said, that's a terrible deal. But unfortunately... The UK's Brexit crisis is escalating as the European Union rejects Prime Minister Boris Johnson's push for a new deal. He wants to redo Theresa May's agreement that gets the UK out of the EU. Basically, Europe is telling Britain, you can either leave with no deal and be a totally foreign country, take the deal we negotiated earlier this year, or come crawling back and join the EU again. We'd love to have you. Boris doesn't really have a ton of leverage, but he is trying a new strategy. Just straight up ghosting the EU. Prime Minister Boris Johnson will not start talks with the European Union leaders over Brexit, unless they first agree to his demand to reopen the divorce deal they struck with his predecessor, Theresa May. So far, the EU leaders have refused. That's right, he's just going to stop talking to the mainland until they agree to renegotiations. Maybe you could pretend to type something until they get the ellipsis. That'll really drive Sebastian Juncker crazy. Because of this complete shutdown in communications, combined with a massive increase in funding in preparation for a no-deal Brexit, people are starting to expect that we might finally soon be seeing the UK leave the EU and end this will-they-won't-they -they relationship once and for all. Their current exit date is scheduled for… no, that can't be right. Halloween! Are you kidding me? Either that's a huge coincidence or one of the negotiators has a sick sense of humor. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into economics and law, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. 
Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.